The season finale of Andor starts with the construction of a bomb. It is a powerful declaration of intent that was painstakingly and intricately built, but it also serves as a reflection of the show, which has carefully plotted and suspenseful first season just waiting for the right time to blow. All in all, the episode is a fierce adrenaline rush that solidifies Star Wars at its pinnacle, while being marred by a lacklustre climax. As the big players approach Ferrix, thunder begins to rattle. In addition to Deidre barking orders prior to Marva's funeral, Luthan, Vel and Sintra are lurking in the shadows and keeping an eye on Andor in the hopes of taking him out. Even Cyril shows his face. The fact that these characters hadn't previously shared a room results in claustrophobic, uneasy vibe that permeates the conclusion. This is a masterclass in suspense and anxiety as far as open acts go, made only feasible by the thorough character development and applied to the rest of the series. Ando starts working after setting the mood. He swiftly realises that he must free the shattered Bix from ISB controlled hotel while also paying tribute to his adoptive mother, Malva. But just as the grand finale seems to be finding its groove, the funeral begins. It's a deft and conventional storytelling move that keeps the audience wondering as well, crafted preparations from all directions begin to gradually fall apart. Additionally, it gives the production staff at Andor the chance to truly use their creative muscles. The show's colour scheme had been quite subdued up until this point. Marva's burial is a cacophony of colours in this scene, with bright yellows and reds bursting from earthy backdrop as the funeral march takes place. The anvil's chimes in the town square are a clever addition to the whole thing. The clangs serve as a warning that the narrative bomb is about to detonate, in case you weren't already creepily aware of it. It's unfortunate that the finale's middle third doesn't maintain the momentum. Many of these amazing multifaceted characters are left watching important events develop in silence when the pressure cooker boils over Ferrix and news of Anto Krieger's death reaches ISB. It seems like a waste of their enormous talents without Luthan's razor sharp delivery or Deidre terrifying everyone. At least Marva, who is arguably Ando's most underused character, has a chance to end with a furious flourish in Marva's post-Morthus address. It's that pivotal act that radicalizes the community and ignites the powder keg, sold by Marva's blend of joyful disobedience and hardened rage. A Ferrix resident throws a bomb, sparking more fights. In contrast to other Star Wars battles, this one between the townspeople and the Empire is full of panic and mayhem with soldiers being crushed and senior officials holding the line behind the cavalry. It also contributes to one of the finale's most unexpected twists. It's as close to a full gritty war movie as we'd probably ever get in a galaxy far, far away. A Bayan mob drags Deidre into his depths after she has been in complete control up to this point. Cyril, her puppy dog, subordinate and potential stalker, is the only one who can save her. She is showing weakness for the first time in the entire series. With a haunted expression befitting someone who has lost everything, Deidre sells it brilliantly, and Cyril, the snivelling bootlicker, appears poised to give Deidre the most awkward kiss ever. Fortunately, that doesn't happen. But what's left is much more interesting. One of the more intriguing and unresolved plotlines that finale lives up for the second season is to explore is Deidre's shell-shocked reaction when the power dynamic is reversed. The irony won't escape Bix and Deidre is broken. How does she mend herself? What occurs when she does then? In the midst of the pandemonium, Andor rescues Bix from the prison with surprisingly little stress and without swimming this time, returning her to a ship and safety. Even while it provides a much needed reprieve in a tightly packed episode of increased stress, it doesn't quite live up to expectations. Andor shows Bix and the diverse group of humans and robots, including Brasso and B2 EMO, that he will return. But Cassian, the aspiring revolutionary, 
doesn't spend enough time with most of these characters for us to care whether he does or not. It falters when it ought to be loud and dramatic, as far as finale cliffhangers are concerned. The last Luthan and Ando battle provides more, but falls short of its extraordinarily high expectations. Although the idea of a fight between the desperate Luthan and Ando, who has undergone significant change since the two last interacted, is alluring, it actually acts as a little bit too much of a restraint. A post credit scene featuring the Death Star served as yet another reminder of the difficulty in putting an end to these rebels, making Ando's offer to kill me or take me in an oddly deflating one. The Ando finale lived up to his promise despite those few and polished moments. In a frantic manner, the Empire's hold has been slightly weakened. Deidre and Cyril's relationship offers much to consider in the upcoming season. And Dawn Mon, whose plot only limped along in the finale due to her purposely given false information to ISB, are now in a stronger position than they were. According to rumours about the upcoming season, Ando will cover a longer period of time, leading up to the events of Rogue One. The best thing Star Wars has produced in a long while, Ando is an intimate portrait of loss, rebellion and sacrifice. Hope you enjoyed this review and the show as much as I did. Like and subscribe. Until the next time, on Star Wars Invader.